Well guys, Mike here and I'm gonna level with you. Every once in a while, I get an email from a company or I see something online that just, it blows my mind. It's so crazy, it's so out there that I just want to talk about it. So I'm gonna start putting a couple of those opportunities on camera. The first one is these guys. And Robert, I'm gonna have you come in. Camera guy's gonna come in. These are the Gale or Gale, depending on how you wanna call them. Evo 5 DDR5 modules with, get this, Fantastic, and why do they call it fantastic? It is because, as you can see, they incorporated two micro pico fans onto these modules heat spreaders. Now, this is actually the first time that something like this has been done. They claim that it's supposed to lower the temperatures, blah, 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 blah. But in this video, look, I'm not gonna go into all the science behind it or do a ton of testing. I just wanna have some fun with these things and explain what they're all about. Anyways, look, it's not like adding more cooling to memory is a new thing. And Gale certainly isn't the first company to stick fans on top of memory either. Corsair, Crucial, and a bunch of others have been doing it for over a decade now, since the DDR2 days actually. And companies like Thermaltake, well, they even slap memory coolers onto their water cooling loops. But Gale's solution is pretty unique here because their fans are integrated directly into the memory heatsink itself. So no add-on modules or anything like that. That's a pretty innovative look at things, especially with DDR5 that has voltage control directly done on the module itself with the power management integrated circuit. That PMIC could technically become a pretty major contributor to module heat, but it hasn't yet. Why? Because DDR5 is still far, far from reaching its theoretical maximum frequencies, but as speeds increase, the demands on that PMIC and the heat it produces will increase too. And that's where this whole fantastic thing comes in to begin with, because if you look at Gale's product page, what they're actually claiming is that these tiny fans are not cooling off the DRAM ICs, rather they're cooling off that PMIC. And based on the specs that these modules are available at, that could be extremely important when it comes to high speeds. And before you ask, no, we do not have any pricing for these modules yet, but because they are some of the highest end on the market right now, plus these two little fans on there, I'm guessing that they're absolutely not gonna be cheap. But what you should know is that there's a little bit of tuning left to go into these samples. We have a just pre-retail sample here. So Gale still has to do a couple of tweaks here and there in order to get this running to their liking. That's why we're not doing a full review on this thing. The all new wireless range from Extrify, the absolutely awesome MZ1 now made wireless to give you a confidence teardrop boost. The M4 wireless is the perfect ergo shape because shape is king, my friends, and the M42 wireless with the asymmetric body for all the grips to shine. All mice charged with USB-C have a swappable back and adjustable weight distribution, are super lightweight and have 75 hours of battery life. Forget the cable, start gaming. Check out the Extrify MZ1, the M4, and the M42 wireless below. All right, now that a couple of bills are paid, we can get that out of the way. Let's talk about the nuts and bolts of these modules because there's actually a lot going on here. Look, the modules themselves look pretty normal, but I think that was the design intent here anyways. They didn't wanna to go too far out on a limb and make it look absolutely bonkers. Oh, and contrary to what Gale's graphic shows, the fans draw in air from the front and then direct it towards the module's center. That's done by blocking three of the four sides and the other side of the module actually gets a completely blank side. Yes, these are still actually, cameraman, you can come in, some of the highest memory modules on the market and they actually end up blocking most coolers fans like this U12S. But on the other hand, if only two modules are installed, your compatibility with most air coolers on the market will be perfectly okay. You just have to take into account that height. In order for them to achieve that, they actually pop the RGB strip in between the two fan sections. So what ends up happening, as you're gonna see in a bit, is those fans end up cooling the RGB strip just as much as they end up cooling the modules themselves. Overall, to me, it looks pretty cool and the tiny fans really do add a unique feel if you're into that sort of thing, I guess. But man, I really hope the construction is improved 
by the time these things are launched into the public sphere. One of the main problems I have is that you can see the bare LEDs from almost every angle when the Evo 5 is installed into a case. Now I understand that that is to make sure that some of the hot air escapes, but there must be a better way to do this, guys. So the general idea here, guys, is pretty straightforward. Slap a couple of fans onto a pretty basic heatsink and hope for the best. But do they make even a lick of difference in an optimal scenario? In order to test that, really simple. Fun little test, let's turn on and off the fans. Does it even matter? Anyways, on the left hand side here, you have the modules running at their full 6600 speed with the fans on. On the right hand side is the same setup, but with the Evo's fans completely off. And do note that this is actually running in a fractal meshify case with all of the case fans running at about 900 RPM. So there is quite a bit of airflow here. The readings you want to look at though are the SPD hub, which is a controller that sits right next to the PMIC on the PCB. So if it's hot, the PMIC is hot as well. So obviously here, the fans are doing something, even in a case with pretty good airflow. But look, these are simple stamp heat spreaders that Gale is using, and they aren't designed to be used in a passive mode to begin with. So this is an optimal situation, and it's made for the fans to actually look good. And that actually becomes even more obvious when you realize that companies like G-Skill and Corsair have launched the same type of 6600 mega transfer per second modules with tighter timings, but without the need for active fan cooling. That goes a lot to say about what is actually going on here. It really does at this point in time feel to be a bit of a gimmick. And I also wanted to do a bit more apples to apples testing against a bunch of other modules I have here at the office, but in this case at a common voltage of 1.35 and 5600 speed. A lot of these use heat spreaders that are common right across each manufacturer's lineup, so this should be a pretty good comparison. After a 15 minute stress test, there's really nothing conclusive here either to indicate the fans can replace a great heatsink design. Personally, I think this boils down to margin of error and nothing more, at least between the Dominator and the Evo 5. But to Giel's credit here, the Dominators are known as having one of the best heat spreader designs on the market right now, bar none. All right, so we've got fans, we've got a heat spreader, and we've got a couple of results. But what I wanted to do is actually take these modules apart and see what makes them tick on the inside. Actually, other than the fans and two pieces of flimsy, flimsy aluminum that count as a heat spreader, with a thermal pad for the DRAM ICs, there's not bloody much here at all, is there? Not even a thermal pad on the PMIC to help with heat dissipation, or not even an internal fin stack that can benefit from the added airflow from those two little fans. It looks like all Gale does is throw some air around at things and they hope for the best. That's it. And I'm sure that there's one other thing that you guys are wondering about and I was wondering about the exact same thing before I got these things in. Gale is operating these modules, so there's four fans on here, at 10,000 RPM all day, every day, irregardless of the thermal situation. And do they make a lot of noise? The answer to that is you might actually hear it in the audio track of this video because we've got a high-end boom mic, so we're right up here. And you might have noticed that the audio in this video is not as clean as a lot of the other ones, especially if you're wearing headphones. And that sound is coming directly from these modules. Let's take a closer listen to that. So will you be able to hear these modules? I would say in most cases, absolutely, especially if you're aiming for the quietest build possible. But look, are the Evo 5 modules with fantastic, cool to look at? Absolutely. I still think this is one of the most unique things that I've seen in the PC hardware industry in the last little while. Are they innovative? I would say yes and no. The no part of that is the fact that Gale obviously didn't maximize their engineering to go along with these fans. They didn't put any internal heat sinks to take advantage of that airflow. The other big red flag for me that puts this firmly into the sort of gimmick territory is the potential longevity issues with the fans themselves. Because right now they are 
relatively loud operating at 10,000 RPM. Now what happens in a year, in two years, as there's dust buildup in those tiny, tiny bearings? That will probably be a major issue and a real question about longevity. And I think that's really where I land with the Gale Evo 5. They look cool, they feel cool, they look unique, they are unique, but they are just one step short of truly innovative because the overall engineering of them is not taking advantage of their core principles. So I guess that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at something that looked pretty crazy and pretty unique, but ended up being a bit of a gimmick. If you really like this type of content, please let me know some additional things that you want me to look at in the comments below. I'm Mike with Haro Canucks, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.